chairperson or county executive and entrusted to monitor renovations and additions to our Baltimore County historic resources. We review and approve nominations to the Baltimore County preliminary landmarks list and comment on national register nominations. Additionally, we are charged with evaluating submissions to the Baltimore County historic tax credit program that encourages the appropriate maintenance and renovation of designated historic properties. With the, would the commissioners please introduce themselves by name and county council district or representation? Uh, Rob Brennan, uh, District 1. Steve Meyer, uh, Executive Appointment. Kutub Syed from District 4. Phoebe Ed Evans. Lord. Phoebe Evans Tosha, Executive Appointment. Ed Hoard, Executive Appointment. Rich Kalman, Executive Appointment. Rich Kalman, Executive Appointment. Is that everyone? Anyone? Uh, Chris Weston, did you? Chris jump Weston's in? here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. I guess we've got them all. Um, hello to the commissioners. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, so next is the. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. So there's the flag. So let's uh, let's all start. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America. and to, to the republic in which it stands, stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you. The Landmarks Preservation Commission operates under the authority standards and requirements of Title VII, Article 32 of the Baltimore County Code. We refer to the United States Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation as administered by the National Park Service. This is the accepted national standard for historic preservation projects. Our own Baltimore County Historic Preservation Design Guidelines directly reference and incorporate the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. Uh, tonight, uh, our procedures are uh, a little different, and we'll have uh, maybe Taylor, you can go over that. Sure. So, if anyone attending the meeting has uh, comments that they would like to offer, there are a couple different ways that you can do that. You can make a comment at any time during the meeting using the chat feature, which is on the right hand side of your screen if you're through a computer. Um, you can also, you can send a chat to the host. You can use the hand raise button. Um, and at the time of discussion, if a host sees that a, a representative we've been speaking with is online, we'll also unmute you. Um, so we have a variety of ways. Uh, just feel free to grab our attention if you would like to speak on something. Can I, can I say something? Do you hear me? Yes. Mr. Syed. Hi, Rob. Can you guys excuse me unless you have a lack of quorum? I've got some problem with my eyes. I cannot see too much and I have, have a little burning sensations in my eyes. This started not, not too long ago. So is that, can I be excused? Or if you don't have a quorum, then I'll hang around. Um, we, we do still have a quorum, however, um... Uh, Rob, I don't, we have, we currently have nine members online. Um, so if anyone were to recuse themselves for, for voting on any of the items, we would not have a, if, if you can attend, great. If you have to, if there's no other option, then you can sign up. Okay. We do have a quorum though. No, I, if you don't have a quorum, I'll attend, but I may not be able to make any more comments because I have a problem with my eyes right now. That's my problem. Very good. Well, thank you, Mr. Syed. If you can hang in there, uh, we'd uh, appreciate it. Uh, okay. Contribute as best you can. Okay, sure, fine. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on. Um, we have important preservation issues to discuss and debate at each meeting. Please limit your comments to the specific preservation submission being reviewed. We ask for your assistance and understanding so that the discussions do not digress. As an additional comment, we can all agree that historic preservation is an important aspect of the quality of life in place that makes Baltimore County unique. 
As a commission, we seek to recommend significant buildings and places for landmark consideration to the county council for their final vote. As commissioners, we serve on the commission due to our expertise, interest, and passion for historic buildings and places and review submissions based solely on their merit. While we may disagree in discussion and voting, we continue to be a collegial body that respects each other personally and professionally. Uh, have there been any changes to the uh, agenda, Ms. Benson? No changes. No changes. Thank you. Um, knowing that we've all read and memorized uh, the meeting minutes from October 8th, uh, is there, uh, do the commissioners have anything to comment on or change? Motion to accept the minutes is written. And that's Ed Horde, second. 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 Very good. Thank you, Mr. Horde and Mr. Meyer. Uh, all in favor of uh, accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Any uh, uh, dissent? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Ms. Bensley, the uh, consent agenda items. Yes, so we have the first consent agenda item is agenda item number six, the National Bank of Coffeesville and Carriage House and Setting, the, de the Decourse property at 10914 York Road in Coffeesville. This is final landmark number 362, MIP number BA887. The proposal is the installation of an aluminum railing system for the front entry steps. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness, citing National Park Service Technical Preservation Services Preservation Brief Number 32, making historic properties accessible in County Code Section 32743. The second consent agenda item is agenda item number eight. It's the McMillan property at 167 Viaduct Avenue in Relay. This is a contributing structure in the Relay County Historic District. The proposal is part two approval for an in-kind fiberglass shingle roof replacement and the in-kind replacement of metal gutters. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness, citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, roofs pages five, seven, and ten, and County Code section eleven two two zero one. Thank you, Ms. Bensley. Uh, do the commissioners uh, wish to pull any of the consent agenda items for further discussion? Uh, I think just wants to. Yes, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. I have ahead. some comments about this railing. If I may, this railing is not an appropriate railing for a residential railing. Um, it is not a welded railing, and I have concerns about its long term um, stability. Um, the pickets are not required uh, for this. Um, elevation. Um, I, I'm just concerned that this is going to detract from the appearance of the bank. It, it's just, um, if you look at the character of the building, um, if this building were to have ever had a railing, it would have been uh, a bronze railing um, from the top step to the bottom step with no pickets in it. Um, or a painted black iron railing, but this this is a very residential railing that doesn't seem to be particularly well put together. And I am right. pro safety. I'm just not. I don't think this is the right railing. I agree with you, Mr. Weston. So why don't we pull item number six and we can uh, address that uh, during the course of the meeting. So we'll. That's good, right? Ms. Bensley? Sounds good. Yep. You okay. guys can pull it and then you can vote on the remaining consent agenda items, which would just be um, agenda item number eight. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda, remaining consent agenda item? So moved. Second. That is Mr. Meyer, and Mr. Holman. Very good. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Agenda item number four. Agenda item number four. This is the White Coven House, the Matthew H. Jr. House. It's 1407 Clark View Road LLC property at 6242 Falls Road in Bear Hills. 
It's final landmark number 256, MIP number BA3244, and the proposal is the relocation of the structure to the rear of 6234 Falls Road. The White Coven House, the Matthew Yeats Singer House, was added to the preliminary landmarks list in January of 2005 under three criteria for contributing significantly to the county's historical heritage for its association with the county's distinctive African American culture and the Scott family settlement in Bear Hills, as a distinctive example of early African American vernacular architecture, and as having the potential to yield archaeological evidence of unrecorded African American history. In October of 2005, County Council unanimously approved Bill 109-05 to add the site to the final landmarks list. The bill went into effect December of 05 and the structure was officially a final landmark. No historic environmental setting for the site was delineated. Three other structures were landmarked along with the White Coven House. Final landmark number 255, the Lerber House located at 6236 Falls Road, Final landmark number 256, the Scott House, located at 6238 Falls Road. And final landmark number 257, the Smith House, located at 6240 Falls Road. Each of these sites was a part of the Scott Settlement, one of Baltimore County's oldest pre-Civil War communities of free African Americans. Approximately two years after the listing was finalized, in September of 2007, 1407 Clarkview Road, LLC, purchased the property, which was then zoned DR2. During the 2008 Comprehensive Zoning Map Process, CZMP, the owners requested the property be rezoned to Business Major, or BM. Historic Preservation staff made comments that the site was a final landmark, however, the zoning request was granted in October of 2008 by County Council. Four months later, in February of 2009, 1407 Clarkview Road, LLC engaged Venable, LLC to apply for a demolition permit for the site, and the permit was given an okay to file, meaning that it had not been approved uh, by planning. Upon receipt of a copy of the permit application, pre former preservation planner Miss Vicki Nevy sent a letter to the property owners informing them that the demolition request was scheduled to be reviewed by the commission. On April 2nd, 2009, a technical committee composed of former commissioners Bruce Boswell, John Hill, Nancy Horse, and Lewis Diggs visited the property with staff to, concern, to confirm the historic nature of the structure. On May 1st, 2009, Venable sent a letter requesting that along with the demolition permit, the structure also be removed from the final landmarks list. Because of the time frame and public notice required, the review for the demolition permit was scheduled for the May 14th, 2009 meeting and the review of delisting the structure was scheduled for the July 9th, 2009 meeting. At the May 14th, 2009 meeting, the commission denied the demolition permit uh, in a seven to three vote. At the July 9th meeting, the commission unanimously denied the request to delist the structure. In August of 2009, the decision was appealed to the Board of Appeals and was ultimately denied. At the time of those reviews in mid-2009, 6242 Falls Road was surrounded by greenery, trees, shrubbery, and bushes. There was a building, 1407 Clarkview Road, located approximately 100 feet west of the White Coven House. However, there were many trees between them, clearly separating them. The building at 1407 Clarkview Road had its own parking lot along Clarkview Road. According to aerial views of the property, work to the adjacent parcels began in 2010 or 2011, and the trees and shrubbery between 6242 Falls Road and 1407 Clarkview Road were cleared out. By 2013, construction had finished and the space between the White Coven House and 1407 Clarkview Road was now a large parking lot with approximately 42 parking spaces. Because the White Coven House was not listed with a historic environmental setting, the commission had no purview over anything besides the exterior of the structure. So there was no LPC review of the changes in the setting. In December of 2019, Historic Preservation staff went, met with Sam Young and Kate Caranda of R. Christopher Goodwin and Associates, Inc. about the possibility of moving the site. Mr. Young and Ms. Caranda explained that because of the structure surrounding by a parking lot, the historic integrity was not intact. They wanted to gauge, gauge staff support on relocating the structure approximately 300 feet southwest to the rear of 6234 Falls Road. Staff did not offer a recommendation one way or the other at the time of the meeting, and following the meeting, sent Mr. Young and Ms. Caranda 
information on the property, past LPC reviews, and submitting an application for review by the LPC. The owners are now bringing the proposal before the commission. One of the reasons in the proposal provided in the description of work by the applicant states that the technical committee report from Baltimore County Landmarks Preservation Commission meeting on May 14th, 2009 proposed, quote, the possibility of moving the dwelling as a preservation practice. The relevant excerpt from the technical committee's report is as follows. Ms. Horse interviewed several of the close neighbors. Those neighbors, including a resident, a Scott descendant immediately to the south, all feel that the building should be preserved and not demolished. Several technical committee members thought it might be advisable to allow the owner to move the house 50 feet south to the site of the recently lost Baltimore County landmark, the George Scott House. As a staff note, the site is likely 6240 Falls Road, where the parking lot entrance is now located. Uh, the developer, Clark B. Road LLC, purchased the land where the Scott House stood some months after it was demolished a couple of years ago. The rationale for possibly moving the house is that it would complete the row of remaining Scott settlement houses, eliminating a gap where the George Scott House was lost. Also, it would allow the developer to more easily develop a contiguous parking lot area for the proposed commercial development. That was all from the technical committee report. Besides the technical committee report being read aloud at the meeting, the possibility of relocating the structure was not discussed in depth at that May 2009 LPC meeting. National Park Service Technical Preservation Services book, Moving Historic Buildings, discusses the relocation of historic structures and, and when and if the relocation should be considered. It states that property should be moved, quote, only when there is no feasible alternative for preservation. In the past, only one to two other Baltimore County final landmarks have been relocated after listing. The most recent was the Parker House located in Towson. The Parker House was approved for relocation from 423 Jefferson Avenue to 410 Fairmont Avenue in November of 2013. The property owners had done substantial improvements and restorations and wished to move it to a new location in the same community. The adjoining sites to the original site were for sale and there was the possibility that apartments would be constructed. The owners had the support of the community and the request was approved by the commission with the commission issuing a notice to proceed with the requirement that all technical documentation related to the move be submitted to the Department of Planning along with a complete photographic record of the process. For the relocation of the White Coven House, staff encourages the commission to thoroughly discuss the proposal and if relocation is appropriate, especially given the history of the structure and the owner's use and maintenance of it. Now, the parking lot been constructed, significant, constructed significantly before the landmark listing, never giving the property a true chance at having a historic environmental setting. Staff would be much more in support of the request. Additionally, had re relocation been proposed back in 2009 following the technical committee's recommendation to relocate the structure 50 feet to the south and then develop around it, staff likely would have been in support of that. Each of the homes within the Scott settlement a rich history for Baltimore County and staff encourages the commission to discuss the implications both of relocating the structure and maintaining it in its current location. Ultimately, staff recommends that the commission assign a technical committee to visit the property and the pre proposed relocation site and report their findings back to the commission. Should the commission at this meeting or later one vote to approve the relocation of the structure, staff strongly encourages the commission delineate a historic environmental setting for the new site. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a technical committee to visit the site and the proposed relocation site and report their findings back to the commission at a later meeting and vote to table the application pending a site visit from the technical committee. The authority for action is National Park Service Technical Preservation Services Moving Historic Buildings in County Code Section 3274. Great. Thank you, Ms. Bensley. Uh, is anyone here representing the property? Yes, we have two representatives from the property online, and they've also prepared a brief presentation, um, just a couple of slides to show you what they're looking to do. So we will unmute them and pull up their presentation so that they can show that. Great.
Okay. Uh, Mr. Syed, it looks like we have uh, enough commission members that have joined uh, that we could set you free if uh, if you are in distress. Okay, Sam Young and uh, Catherine Caranda are there unmuted, so you're welcome to address the commission. And I will just let me know when to switch slides. Yeah, can you start? This is Sam Young. Um, can you start with slide one? Oh, sorry. Did not know it was on that slide. Great, thank you. And actually, you can move to the next slide. Uh, good evening. My name is Sam Young, and I am an architectural historian at R. Christopher Goodwin and Associates, a cultural resources management firm uh, based in uh, Maryland. I am joined by fellow architectural historian Kate Caranda and our client, Mr. Lawrence Reef. R. Christopher Goodwin and Associates has been retained to explore building relocation as a preservation practice. Next slide. As overviewed in our application, the White Colvin House is a late 19th century dwelling with an early 20th century addition associated with Bear Hills, an African American late 19th to mid 20th century residential community. The dwelling is a contributing resource. Excuse me a minute. I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback. It's very hard for me to understand what he's saying. Could everyone mute and, except for Sam? Okay, is there any feedback now? No, you're good. I got it. Okay. Do you want to, want to go back to the previous slide and I can start from the beginning? Thank you. So again, um, good evening. My name is Sam Young and I'm an architectural historian at R. Christopher Goodwin Associates, a cultural resource management firm based in Maryland. I am joined by fellow architectural historian Kate Caranda and our client, Mr. Lawrence Reef. Our Christopher Goodwin Associates has been retained to explore building relocation as a preservation practice. Next slide. As overviewed in our application, the White Colvin House is a late 19th century dwelling with an early 20th century addition associated with Bear Hills, an African American late 19th to mid 20th century residential community. The dwelling is a contributing resource to the Bear Hills Historic District and is a Baltimore County landmark. Next slide. Aerial imagery suggests the White Colvin House retained a wooded environment up to 2011. The area has undergone significant commercial development over the last 30 years. The White Colvin House has been retained and actively marketed for commercial use over the last several years, but no viable user has been found for repurposing the dwelling following established rehabilitation um, standards. Next slide. Uh, the technical committee report from the Baltimore County LPC meeting on May 14, 2009 had proposed the possibility of moving the dwelling as a preservation practice. Next slide. The site at 6234 Falls Road, a half open parcel lot and historically related residential site within the Bear Hills District, fulfills the requirements of retaining historical and physical association. Further, vehicle access to the rear of the dwelling facing Falls Road would facilitate building relocation. Next slide. The considered relocation of the White Colvin House to this parcel will reestablish its relationship to the surviving dwellings of Bear Hills and form a stronger historic identity within the historic district. Relocation as a preservation practice, while not typically explored, is an established pattern within the district already. Neighboring Aquila Scott House was relocated to 6238 Falls Road due to a nearby commercial development in 2007. Next slide. Uh, today, the White Colvin House no longer retains a visual relation to contributing resources to the Bear Hills Historic District or a landscape component common to its historic visual identity. Much of the northern corridor of Falls Road in this area is now commercial development. 
We request LTC comments and technical assistance prior to pursuing relocation as a preservation practice, which would be designed to restore integrity of setting, associated uh, association with related dwellings in the district, historical character, historical appearance, and rehabilitation of the building as a dwelling. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Young. Uh, is anyone else presenting from your team? Um, no, that's um, just me. Great, thank you. Um, commissioners, uh, uh, Ms. Bensley, is there anyone uh, from the community who is, has joined us this evening? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Um, if anyone that has called in would like to speak, please feel free to send a, a chat to staff so that we can unmute you. But at this time, I'm not aware of anyone. All right, thank you, Ms. Bensley. Um, with the uh, staff recommendation in mind, uh, do the commissioners have uh, uh, any questions for the, the project team? I do have a question. I want to know if the building has been used or if it's vacant and for how long it has been used. I can't understand what she's saying. Could you repeat, speak? I asked if the building has been vacant. Vacant. Or, mm -hmm. yes. And for how long it has been? Um, yes, I believe the building has been vacant for at least 10 years, if not um, slightly longer. And uh, I have. I, I have a comment. Should I, is it okay for uh, us to start talking, uh, commissioners, or? Sure, certainly. Yeah, I, I have a, a bit of a problem. Um, if you come to me and you say, there are no trees because I took them all down and surrounded this building with a parking lot, and now I have to move it to make it more connected to the, to the neighborhood that I just totally amputated it from. I have a problem with that. I don't think that's the right way to do it. That's not the right reason to give, in my view, of I did something, now we need to change it because I made up something that's not very nice for this historic building. Two, second point is these houses were originally mercantile houses. They were located along the Falls Road Turnpike and next to the Bear Hills mining operations. And they were, you know, commercial buildings that were really used and related very strongly to the road. That's why these buildings are up close to the road. To move one of the buildings that was close to the road that was meant to be a mercantile structure and meant to address the road back in the back of the site, we still have the building, that is true, but it's not doing what it was doing before. And I have a problem moving it to some remote location, sort of back in the back, um, particularly for the reason that we're given for why it needs to move. And, and what do you pick up? Two parking spaces, maybe, maybe three. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if you got three. I think two for sure. But to really, to tear down this, we have so little African-American history in our county. To start tearing, or moving them around and messing them up more, this building has great opportunities. I've talked, Lawrence, I've talked to you about this before. This is a building that could be a center piece of your center. It's with a little bit of effort. I've heard of at least one person who said that they were willing to do it. They wanted to do it for you. So I, I, I have a problem. Um, in, in kind of agreement with that, um, I suspect that the reason they want to move it is um, they want to set up for more development right there. The parking lot isn't sufficient. They want to build something else and, and market that land right on Falls Road. So we'll end up with a substantial structure that may overpower the neighboring historic buildings even after you move it. I don't think there's enough room. I mean, that one building of a footprint of what, 20 by 30? is you, There's nothing you can build there that makes any financial sense. Um, but it, maybe well, a couple of parking spaces. I mean, I, I see two to three parking spaces possible, but that's about it. 
and it wouldn't be parking spaces. They would then have an uncluttered lot that they could build a building and take up the whole parking lot is what I'm suggesting. Oh, well, that's a, I, I don't know what the plans are, but I, I mean, to me, I see no, no the building maybe. It's, you know, it's costly to maintain a building, especially if it's big. So they just want to get rid of it. Perhaps uh, the consultants can provide us some insight into some of these questions. Uh, so I did not hear the last question. Uh, perhaps the uh, well, there was some uh, discussion about why you're moving the building, um, and we can't uh, determine whether it's uh, to build additional retail or to gain additional parking spaces. I can tell you that based off of our discussions with Mr. Reese, um, there has been no proposed, um, you know, discussion of, um, you know, additional parking spaces or any built, you know, um, retail space. Um, the reason to move it would be to put it back into residential use and the first and foremost, put it back into use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Um, I, I do have trouble also with with this where they somebody has a historic building. They knew it was a historic building when they bought the parcel, and then by just neglecting it and letting it fall into disrepair, um, they're essentially avoiding any responsibility for it by just abandoning. Yeah. Also, weren't they the ones who requested the zoning change from residential to commercial? In the first place, so if they really wanted it to stay residential, why would they have requested the zoning change back in um, what was it 2009 the or no 2008 the change from residential to commercial. Um, what I, I'd like to hear from the owner what efforts were you know made to try to. Um, you know, put the building into to use. Rather than having it sit empty for 10 years. Mr. Young, are you able to answer that question? Hi, yes, actually, um, our client, Lawrence Reese, who is um, the property owner is on this meeting. Um, I was wondering if you could unmute him so that he could answer some of these questions directly. He's unmuted. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, this is this is Lawrence Reef. I hope you can hear me. Yes, welcome. Okay, I'm sorry, I've, I've lost my video, but you know, I'm I'm not an expert at this. Uh, I've I've heard that there was lots of vegetation on the site. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we really never took any trees down, any major trees. Yes, there was trash and debris that we cleaned up. There were 55 gallon drums and 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 other types of of, of materials that were were deposited on the site that we did clean up. This was a hydraulic oil plant that we recycled into. A retail building trying to provide services for the neighborhood. Uh, we have no intention of developing anything more on the site. We're really just trying to, to clean up the house that, that and relocate it to a more appropriate site and create a couple extra parking spaces. Thank you, Mr. Reef. Sure. Well, I may, may I make a motion then that we follow the staff recommendation to form a technical committee to discuss the options and view the site and, and take it into more depth to report back to the commission, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Kelman will second the motion. Great. We have a second. Is there a vote? Let's have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sounds like the motion to follow the staff recommendations has been approved unanimously. And so we will uh, contact uh, interested parties to set up a technical committee site visit. What is, since I'm a new commissioner, what is the process for determining who would be on the um, technical committee? Uh, make your, uh, your wish known. Okay, thank you. And we can only have so many people. Uh, oh, we cannot have a quorum in the technical committee. Right. That would commit. That would constitute a meeting outside the meeting laws. Okay. So what? What's the kind of size? 
the, the staff will handle it. They'll okay. organize it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so less than uh, a quorum is considered eight commissioners, so we'll need less than that. Typically, technical committees are generally five or less. Um, I will send out an email likely early next week um, asking for interest, and I'll correspond and we'll get something on the calendar. So look out in your email if you're interested, and we'll go from there. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Bensley, and thank you to the project team and commissioners. Um, agenda item number five. Agenda item number five is the Davis property at 3617 Stony Brook Road in Fieldstone. It's a non-contributing structure in the Fieldstone County Historic District, and the proposal is the in-kind replacement of a 48-foot concrete walkway, the replacement of a 6-foot by 10-foot concrete porch with a new 6-foot by 16 porch, and the extension of the roof line to cover the new porch. The homeowner is proposing to do exterior alterations to the front porch and front walkway of her home located in Fieldstone. The first item included is the in-kind replacement of an existing 48-foot concrete walkway as the walkway is coming up in some spots and the homeowner would like to do it. The new poured concrete walkway will be in the same location as the existing and there is no expansion, be it widening or lengthening of the walkway. The second item included in the proposal is the replacement of an existing six foot by 10 foot poured concrete porch with a larger six foot by 16 foot poured concrete porch. The existing porch is not covered by the roof. As a note, the homeowners have provided two different depths for the porches in the historic review application and in emails and phone calls with staff, it was said that the existing porch was six feet deep, um, but then the site plan provided said seven feet. Uh, staff did confirm that the the existing depth is six feet and it is going to stay at six feet should the proposal be proposed, uh, approved. Um, in regards to the proposal itself, uh, the homeowners are proposing to redo the front porch and extend it by six feet to align with the end of the home. The new porch is proposed to be poured concrete with three posts and a railing, either vinyl or aluminum. Staff did communicate to the homeowner that the use of vinyl railings has not been supported in the past. However, the use of black aluminum has. In conjunction with the new porch, the homeowners would like to install uh, new roofing to cover the new porch. The new roofing is proposed to be 16 feet in length and 7 feet in width to cover the new porch. The roof line will be extended one foot past the porch in the front and will align with the porch on the side. The proposed roof is asphalt shingle to match the existing roof on the dwelling, and it will have gutter, gutters and a vinyl slab to match the rest of the home. The entire roof is not being replaced. In a phone call with the homeowner, it was explained to staff that the proposed roof will be an extension of the existing roof and not a drop roof. The look will be consistent with the rear of the home, which features an existing covered porch through the use of an extended roof line. Overall, staff feels that these proposals are consist consistent with non-contributing structures in Fieldstone. The homeowner provided a few photos of other similar 1950s and 1960s ranch style non-contributing homes in the district that feature the type of porch that the homeowners at 3617 Stony Brook are trying to achieve. The proposed work is cohesive and harmonious with other dwellings. The porch will also tie in nicely with the existing rear porch as they will look similar following the completion of work. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the in-kind replacement of the 48-foot poured concrete walkway as proposed, vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a new 6-foot by 16-foot front porch with the conditions that the post the post must be wood or aluminum cased in wood, and that the railings be aluminum, not vinyl, and vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the extension of the roof line seven feet by 16 feet as proposed. This is all citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, Porches and Steps, pages three through five, and County Code section 327403. Thank you, Ms. Bensley. Uh, are the homeowners uh, on the line? I'm not sure. There are two call-in users, but it doesn't have their, their names, so I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, if uh, those numbers belong to the uh, representatives of 3617 Stony Brook, please uh, email Taylor and she can unmute you. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue with the discussion. Um, commissioners, uh, comments? I have a question. Uh, I don't understand how the roof extension is going to work. They say the roof extension will not be on top of the other roof, will be a continuation of the line of the roof. If that's the case, there's no way you're, if you continue it seven feet out from the house, 
that same roof slope, you you can't get under it. You'll have to crawl down, get our hands and knees to get under it. So I don't understand how the roof is going to work. And I, I think we need some a detail that shows how that roof is working. I I just I don't have enough information to to say yes, it looks good or no, it doesn't. I I don't understand it. Thank you, Mr. Hort. Um, I agree uh, with you in that regard. I think the uh, the roof, the new roof, would have to start significantly up the existing roof to hit the same same eave line, eave point, uh, further out. Um, so it'll be a, a much larger structure than we see in the adjacent photograph uh, on this slide. Uh, so the, there are some points to hit there, and uh, it would be. Uh, Better for all, including the owner and the contractor, to have a better sense of what this is going to look like. I, I I think we should ask them to do the sketch of of what the, how this is actually going to look a proper sketch that really shows us how the thing works, and let us look at it in the next meeting. I don't, there's not enough meeting. Um, but I think we can approve the walkway. That's fine, but I don't think we I can't approve the uh, the addition to the rule. Any other commissioners wish to comment? There's some middle ground um, that since we don't meet in December, I, I'm just conscious of the homeowner having to go 60 days rather than 30 days. Um, is there something, Ed, maybe that they could provide uh, to um, our staff? Not running, not in run afoul of the open meeting laws. I, I, we could. They could pass it around and we could all discuss it on the phone, but I think that's violating the open meeting laws. Yeah, I don't think I, we can do that. So we'll I, have to, I mean, it has to be in a meeting, unfortunately. That's the way it's set up. Okay. There isn't something you'd be comfortable with um, voting on that would include a clause about about how it should look. Or I, I don't know how I, to put it in technical terms. If I thought I had a, a good solution for doing this, Rolf, I would say it. I don't. I, I, I think it's somebody's going to do some drawings and some sketches and figure out a way that this makes sense from not only from the front, but from the side, because I think it's there's a potential for a very awkward situation uh, created here that uh, until it's drawn, I don't until it's worked out. They haven't really worked it out yet. Do you have headroom? Does it work? What's the side of it? It's, you know, I just there's too much there that needs to be looked at. It's it's not terribly complicated. But at the same time, it's not simple. There's not a simple design solution that I see. Thank you, Mr. The, I think we can approve the, the walkway if they want to go ahead and do the walkway. But I think this, the other thing will have to stay until we can figure it out, until they can figure it out and tell us what they want to do. Ms. Bensley, any suggestions uh, from staff side? Um, you guys could vote to a certificate of appropriateness for the um for the walkway proposal um you for the the roof replacement it sounds like you guys are leaning towards not issuing a certificate of appropriateness or notice to proceed and staff will communicate to the homeowner that you guys are looking for an elevation drawing to show how the roof line will be extended um and then you guys will just have to offer a decision one way or the other on the actual poured concrete porch on if you want to issue a certificate of appropriateness for that or you do not want to. So three proposals to, to vote on, you can approve one or two and not the third, that's no worries. And staff will communicate to the applicant what you're looking for. Okay, so you're suggesting that we could approve the, uh, the new porch, the concrete porch, the larger porch, and that they would come back for the actual structure that would go on the porch. Correct. If yeah. that is to do that, they'll need the foundations. You know, they'll need to do structural foundations for the roof that they're building out there. And right. There's others. I'm not sure they. I mean, I guess they could take a shot at it. But if we don't mm -hmm. like it for some reason or don't like the spacing, they'd have to re go back and redo it, and we'd yeah. find it hard to do that. So I think they should just wait and do the I, do the I, sidewalk. And I, I think we do have to pair the porch and the roof. I agree with that on that. Okay. I'll make okay. A, I'll make a motion. Okay, any other comments, commissioners? Anyone else have anything uh, to offer on that? Okay, Ed, go for it. I make a motion that we issue a certificate of appropriateness or a notice to proceed. I'm not sure which we need here. 
for um, to do the sidewalk uh, up to the porch. For the porch itself, it needs to wait until we have a. They need to come back to this board with a an elevation and a, a front elevation and a side elevation that shows us what that roof looks like and how it works with the existing slopes of the roof. I want a, I, I want a, a proper drawing that really shows head head heights and how it aligns with the existing eave lines and gutters and how it all ties together and. and how it works and how it looks at the end of the day. Right. Very good. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Got a second there. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Horrid and commissioners. Uh, we'll go to agenda item number six, which was on the previously on the consent agenda. Uh, and at the request of Mr. Weston, uh, we have we have brought it to the fore. So, uh, do we want to present it in a more formal manner? I guess the owners aren't um, currently uh, online. Ms. Benson? Correct. Okay. Correct. They're not here, um, but staff can provide a more um, formal description of it. All right. Very good. Um, um, go ahead. So agenda item number six is the National Bank of Cockeysville and Carriage House and Setting, the day course property at 10914 York Road in Cockeysville. This is final landmark number 362, myth number BA887, and the proposal is the installation of a, an aluminum railing system for the front entry steps. The National Bank of Cockeysville is currently being rented out, but rented out to Tried Foot Brew, a consignment shop focusing on children and maternity clothes. The applicants are seeking approval to install an aluminum hand railing for the front steps of the building after some concerns were raised by elderly shoppers. The railing is proposed to be six feet long, aluminum, and have two posts connected to the steps. The railing will not be attached to the structure and will be easily removable should future tenants and or owners want to remove it. Um, as a reminder, this is only coming in because the structure has a designated historic environmental setting. Staff's original recommendation was to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness, citing National Park Service Technical Preservation Services Preservation Brief Number 32, making historic properties accessible in County Code Section 32743. Thank you, Ms. Bensley. Um, knowing that the owners are not online, uh, Mr. Weston, would you like to restate your uh, Concerns. Sorry, it took me a moment to get to the unmute button there. Uh, yes, this railing uh, is not appropriate for this building. Um, historically, this building would have had a, a bronze railing without pickets. The proposed railing is an aluminum railing with pickets. It's very residential. Um, also, the construction of the railing, it gets screwed into the steps and then um, is assembled in place. And I have concerns that um, the railing system uh, will not uh, be long lived. Um, these types of railings are not really designed for that application. Um, and so I am suggesting that this is not the appropriate railing for this building. I, I am in favor of a railing, just not this railing. Any other comments, commissioners? I uh, agree with Mr. Weston. Typically, the uh, in a painted steel or a traditional wrought iron rail uh, is uh, what they call core drilled into the uh, into the steps, and it, it in this case would be a single rail on on two. Uh, posts, one top, one bottom. Uh, a bank would have a, a bronze cap on the steel rail for sure. Uh, and there would not be any guard rail, any pickets. So uh, the rail is not appropriate for this building. Certainly the, the aluminum plate with the four bolts, uh, top and bottom would do much, much more damage to the granite steps than the, a single core drilled hole at each location. So uh, I agree as well. Any other comments? How about a uh, motion, uh, Mr. Weston? 
I, I make a motion to deny the application. Is there a second? Should, should we deny it with um, with an advisory to at least guide them to the solution? Yes. Uh, and Ms. Bensley, do we need to elaborate on that, or do you think you have enough uh, based on our comments? If there are specific things that you would like outlined in the the actual email tomorrow, please feel free to reiterate them. Um, general idea, but if there's anything specific that you want the the applicant to understand, please feel free to state them at this time. I, I think I could summarize in more historically appropriate and materials and construction. It sounds like the uh, it may have been uh, have been installed uh, on a pro bono basis by uh, a retired contractor. From what I read in the uh, in the uh, information packet, um, he may his skills may be limited as to fabricating a, a steel painted steel rail uh, rather than buying it off the shelf at a store. Um, but I think uh, any uh, metal working company or iron iron uh, fabricator could uh, easily install a more traditional metal rail and attachment uh, on the steps. So we would recommend that they pursue uh, a subcontractor that can install a historically appropriate rail. So let's vote. Can we vote on that? We have a motion. Is there a second? No second. There's a second, Mr. Horde. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All righty. Moving on, we have agenda item number seven. This is the BY or uh, BTYL LLC property at 912 Adana Road in Sudbrook Park. This is a contributing structure and expansion two of the Sudbrook Park County Historic District. The proposals are the replacement of a slate roof with a gaff Camelot two antique slate shingle, the replacement of a wood front door with a Feather River fiberglass door, the replacement of a wood side door with gel when with a gel when fiberglass door, and the replacement of a pent awning over the side door. On September 27, 2020, code enforcement received a constituent complaint that the property at 912 Adana Road was being flipped and that the contractors were replacing existing wood windows, the roof, the roof and the front door, and had failed to pull any permits, including electrical, plumbing, and building permits. Code enforcement went out to the property and determined that no work meeting LPC review or or work to the exterior of the structure had begun. And because of this, this is not an ex post facto request. The work proposed for the structure involves work to the roof and work to the front and side doors. The work to the roof proposed involves the replacement of an existing slate roof with, a ga with gaff Camelot two antique shingles. The existing slates are deteriorated and falling off, and there is interior damage to the roof structure because of water leaks. Although our Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines call for the in-kind repair and replacement of slate shingles, the Commission has supported the use of slate line and similar shingles uh, as the rep as replacements for slate shingles for properties on Adana Road in the past. Because of this, staff is in support of the proposal. Along with the roof, work is proposed to replace both the front and side doors and to replace an existing wood pent awning over the side door. There is no mention of replacing the rear door in the application. For information provided by the applicant, the front and side doors are both wood and significantly deteriorated. The front door is proposed to be replaced with a Feather River fiberglass door in a craftsman style. The side door is proposed to be replaced with a gelled wind six panel fiberglass door. Neither proposed door matches the existing doors in style or design. The pent awning over the side door is proposed to be replaced in kind. The replacement will match the existing shape, design, and size and will be constructed of smooth finished PVC painted white at the sides and soffits. The canopy roofing is proposed to be the same shingles as the main roof building to match the existing. 
While staff is in support of the replacement of the pent awning, staff questions the need to replace the front and side doors as adequate photos documenting the doors were deteriorated beyond repair were not submitted. Staff would like staff would also like to note that the style of the proposed front door replacement, the Feather River fiberglass door, is a craftsman style and is not appropriate for the architectural style of the house, which is a Cape Cod slash blending. Based on the photographs provided, it appears that the doors and door frame could be fixed, uh, could be repaired in kind, maintaining the original doors, but securing the structure and improving the overall appearance. The existing door style is present on a majority of similar houses uh, in this portion of Sudbrook Park. Should the commission feel that the replacement of the doors is appropriate, staff recommends the replacement doors be wood and matching the design of the existing doors. As a note, this application does not include any additional work to the exterior of the house, specifically the window work. Uh, should the applicant want to make any additional repairs or alterations, additional review is required. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the roof replacement as proposed. Vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the in-kind repairs of the wood front and side doors and door frames. And vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the in-kind replacement of the pent awning over the side door. The replacement shall match the existing in materials, design, and size. The authority for action is citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, Windows and Doors, pages 7 and 8, and Roofs, pages 7 to 10, and County Code, section 32743. Thank you, Ms. Bensley. Is anyone uh, representing this property on the line? Uh, it doesn't look like it. All right, very good. Um, we will continue on then. Um, commissioners, any comments? This is Chris Weston. Um, can we go to the slide of the two doors? I don't believe that these are wooden doors. The fiberglass. These are metal doors. Um, uh, and the, in fact, the one on the left, which is the front door, seems to be dented. Yeah. So I, I, there's, I don't believe that there's anything to preserve there. I would agree. I think you, by that uh, unpainted interior frame with the screws in it, that's clearly indicative of a fiberglass trim and, uh, and a metal, metal door um, or fiberglass door perhaps. So if they wanted to replace them, uh, uh, uh we think this is what's in the neighborhood was there is there any documentation of what uh the original door might have looked like some of the other houses had similar doors i would think ms bensley do you know that do you know if that's the case i would defer to caitlin on that one okay yeah, so other similar homes in this section of suburb park have uh the same type of door um as is on this one with with the uh nine glazing on the top and the two panels on the bottom um there i looked at several other um real estate listings for houses on that street um and other photos that we have in our files and majority of them have this style of door okay so it sounds like it would be appropriate to replace either refurbish these doors or replace uh, them with new doors of the same type. Uh, commissioners, any other uh, comments on um, the, uh, the say pent awning perhaps, or the roofing? Well, on the roofing, uh, is that asphalt uh, shingles? Are they, I know they simulate slate, but are they asphalt? Yes. Or they, they are, okay. Is there, mm -hmm. is that, Faux shingle, slate shingle. It's made uh, of like a cementous type product. It feels and it's shaped and it's, it simulates a slate shingle pretty, pretty close mm -hmm. for something that isn't slate. Yes. So I'm thinking uh -huh. that might be the better product to put on the roof. That's the uh, we've seen a number of these houses uh, over the years, and uh, uh, 
have determined that the uh, a new slate roof uh, would be about half the cost of the house. <laughs> Uh, right. value, value of the house. So I think we, in the past, we've um, uh, we have approved the synthetic or the antique slate shingled uh, okay. fiberglass roof. Okay. I know on the pent roof at the side door, uh, there was some mention of uh, plastic trim uh, in the description. Description and. Um, We've asked them to replace uh, with in kind material, which would be wood. Uh, it looks pretty uh, pretty simple. It looks like it's been worked on over the years. There's no real articulation of uh, of the wood beaded board or uh, or, or framed panels at all. So uh, I guess they can replace as it exists in kind and wood. Um, so with that, uh, Mr. Weston, yes. And there seems to be a lot of detail missing or covered over by plywood on the side there. I, it just uh -huh. it doesn't look original at all. So maybe we could ask them uh, when they deconstruct it to uh, uh, repair what they what they find. Um, or or find one in the neighborhood that is original and sort of replicate that. Um, mm -hmm. This this looks like a submarine gone wrong or something. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, would uh, anyone be interested in fashioning that into a motion? Chris. <laughs> uh, I motion to. Uh, replace the roof uh, with synthetic asphalt shingles. I motion to replace the doors or repair the doors as they exist, allowing aluminum doors with nine lights over two panels. And I motion to repair the penthouse roof to replicate the historical condition. Very good. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Mr. Meyer, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next is agenda item number nine, and I will recuse myself on this one and uh, You'll be hearing from uh, my associate, Lily Mundroff. Yes, so agenda item number nine is Mount Welcome Retreat, Farmstead Barn and Slave Quarters and Setting. It's the Wu and Schlashnagel property at 3144 Granite Road in Woodstock. This is final landmark number 244, myth number BA9. Uh, the proposal is the expansion of the driveway by 18 feet to create a parking pad and the construction of a terrace on the west side of the home. The homeowners are proposing exterior alterations to the south and west of their home. The alterations include the expansion of an existing driveway with space to turn around and, building, and the building of a terrace. For the driveway, the homeowners would like to pave an additional roughly 18 feet by 61 feet to upgrade the existing space used as a parking pad. The additional paving is proposed to be done with blacktop and a lighter crushed aggregate will be rolled into the section to differentiate it from the driveway. Because of a buried propane tank near the driveway and proposed location of the parking pad, a retaining wall will be necessary on the partial east and partial east. The block wall will be similar to the granite used on the existing driveway wall and, and on the home, and photos of the existing are included in the meeting materials. The existing trash and recycling enclosure will be moved to the, uh, to the north of the new paved area, and an open wood storage shed with a fiberglass shingle roof will be constructed. Along with the work to the driveway and parking pad, the homeowners would like to do a new stone terrace on the west side of the home. Off the 20th century edition, uh, recent modifications, which were completed in 2017, and reconfigure the walkway to the front entrance. The terrace is proposed to have a landscaped grass area with an outdoor sink and solar lighting along the walkway. The terrace will be blue stone on a concrete slab, which matches the existing blue stone on concrete slab on the addition's open porch. 
with the construction, the front steps will be properly leveled and supported as they are currently out of level and separating. The construction of the terrace requires the re relocation of two historic artifacts, a granite hitching post and a granite water trough. The water trough appears to be moved in the same location, just moved slightly closer to the existing driveway wall, will be incorporated into a flower bed and landscaping. The hitching post will be relocated a little further away and used as a marker at the beginning of the new stone walkway. Overall, staff feels that the proposals are appropriate given the size of the property. While the expansion of the driveway seems large, the parcel is approximately 15 acres with eight acres delineated as the property's historic environmental setting, and it will not be visible from the public right of way. The work proposed to expand the driveway and create a terrace will not have a negative impact on the appearance of the 19th century dwelling and will allow for more usable outdoor space. The only concern staff has is regarding the relocation of the granite hitching post if the current location is its original location. Currently, it exists next to the water trough, northwest of the existing driveway and parking area. While the trough will be moved only slightly to better fit between the sitting landscaped area and the bluestone tiles, the hitching post is proposed to be re relocated slightly outside the terrace. Although staff understands the current location of the hitching post is not able to be maintained with the proposal, staff would prefer to see the hitching post retained closer to the trough to allow for the preservation of those artifacts. The hitching post and water trough are not mentioned in the survey form from 2000. And because of this, should the locations that they currently exist in be non-original at this time, staff would be okay with them being relocated as proposed. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness with the condition the hitching post be located in closer proximity to the water trough if it's original in location now, citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, Fences and Land, Landscaping pages one through five and county code section 327403. And I Mitch. believe I was just gonna say, yeah. since Rob has recused himself, Mitch, we're gonna make you chair for this. Yes. Uh, so we can I, I, discussion. I, I assume that and um as the as the as the acting chair for this one item, can we hear from of uh, the person representing the property owner? Yes, Lily, you're unmuted. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, this is Lily Mundruff with Brennan and Company Architects. Um, um, so as, um, as uh, presented, we're um, proposing to do the terrace work and the expansion of the driveway. Um, in regards to uh, the hitching post, um, it, uh, they were um, sort of lined up and located when the um, uh, earlier work was done with the uh, addition and renovation. Um, so it's not an original location and uh, therefore we felt that it was okay to, um, to still have it uh, line up with that um, pathway to uh, the front steps, but be kind of on the, um, on the other side of the, of the walk. Um, however, um, I, I mean, it's really up to you guys to sort of weigh in on what your thoughts are. We know where the hitching post and the trowel were originally placed. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at some of the original photos um, that we had from a few years back um, and they were in that close location, but not, not in alignment um, um, with where the wall um, is. So, um, so really uh, um, the, the trough is really basically lining up with the wall currently um, and the hitching post was, um, was relocated uh, probably a couple of feet just to line up with that, uh, um, with that porch side porch area. Um, but no, I don't, I mean, we don't have a record of that. As a, as a formality, could I, can I ask if there's anybody else on the line that, that uh, wishes to speak on this item? 
it looks like uh, one of the property owners is online. Uh, uh, Caitlin George Schloschnagel. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, but if he wants to offer any comments as well. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know that I have any additional clarifying comments from, uh, from what Lily said. Um, I, I don't believe that we have any records of the exact position of the the trough and the hitching post um except that they were you know generally located in that in that sort of area of the of the house uh when we when we purchased it um thank you both for that is is there any further discussion um or comments from uh, the commission members. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, it seems pretty you know, cut and wide. The biggest thing is the expansion of the parking area. That's, and the rest of it is moving the two granite, uh, the hitching post and the trough, and building a couple of terraces. Uh, I guess at the end of the parking area. I'll, I'll make a motion. I make the motion that we allow the work to proceed with the recommendation that they be sensitive to the placement of the hitching posts in relation to the, the trough. Okay, let's second that. Thank you. Uh, so we have the second. Um, um, all in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And I was recused on that. If you'll note that, please. Uh, yes. For the record, please note that uh, Mr. Brennan had recused himself from this uh, from this item. Thank you, much. All righty. The last item up for discussion is agenda item number 10. This is the Pot Spring Farmhouse and Slave Quarters and Sentence the Bird Property at 2201 Pot Spring Road in Timonium. This is final landmark number 267, MIP number BA434. The proposal has amended plans to downsize a garage addition originally, originally approved by the LPC June 9th, 2016. This project involves amended building plans for an addition and garage for the dwelling at 2201 Pot Spring Road. The original proposal, which involved the construction of a one-story addition and two-story four-bay garage, was previously reviewed and conditionally approved by the commission on June 9, 2016. The original plans are included in the meeting materials and the conditions outlined with the approval were as follows. The garage footprint must be moved further to the north and aligned with the mudroom north wall. The garage south wall must align on the same plane as the southern facing house pillars. The garage doors should be wood carriage style or barn style doors. Uh, the mudroom and garage windows must match the house in size, have the same light configuration, and be wood with true divided lights. The board and batten siding should be wood or hardy plank, and a site plan or plat showing all setbacks from the property line should be submitted for review and approval. Following the 2016 approval, the addition was never constructed. The homeowners came in, in September 2020 seeking approval to amend the originally approved plans in order to downsize the addition and allow construction to begin. At the meeting, the commission voted not to issue a certificate of appropriateness or a notice to proceed, stating that they wanted the appli applicant to come back before the commission with a detailed site plan showing that the location of the dwelling and the proposed location of the garage additional information on the grading plan, a well thought, thought out plan for the corner where the roofs met, and an elevation drawing of the overlap of the front porch and the garage. The homeowners have now submitted plans adjusting the corner where the roofs meet, the rake, transitions, the rake transition to the eave, uh, allowing for a six inch gutter to an eight inch by eight inch scupper and six inch downspout so there are no possible water issues. The homeowners have also submitted a site plan that better shows the location of the new mudroom addition and the 33 foot by 26 foot proposed garage. Included in the site plan was a view of the property with topography and contour lines to show the commission the effects of moving the garage to the north an additional uh, 9 feet 9 inches. 
uh, to align it with the back porch. A letter from the homeowner surveyor, JS Dallas Inc., is included in the meeting materials and explains the need to construct the garage where it is proposed due to environmental constraints. While an elevation drawing showing the overlap of the section of the front porch and the garage from the west elevation facing east was not received, the homeowners did provide a cross section drawing through the mudroom. A photograph from 2009 was also submitted to show the view from the end of the driveway, showing how far the previous garage stuck out versus the front facade of the home. Staff has also provided a 2014 aerial view of the home and previous uh, of the home and the previous garage to show the placements. Staff feels that the design and materials of the proposal are appropriate and consistent with what was already approved and encourages the commission to discuss the location of the garage, given that, however, we do feel that the proposal is appropriate as proposed at this time. Staff's recommendation is to vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness, setting Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, additions and infill pages two through four, and County Code section 327403. All right, thank you, Ms. Bensley. Um, are the, is the project team on the line, looks like? Yes, uh, Ms. Colleen Bird is online, so. You're unmuted, Colleen. Hi, I'm here, yep. Hi, right, welcome. Thank uh, you. Welcome back, as, as, we, as we like to say. Um, uh, commissioners, do you have any additional questions for Ms. Bird? I have one. Uh, there's, I see something on here that I would, uh, I don't think I would ever do. Uh, do a, P, a, a slope roof coming down against a wall. Uh, even if you put a cricket in, which they've shown, it is you. It is a place that will leak. I mean, that's, you can just, Tom, Ms. Ms. Homer, you need to just realize that where that, on the board and batten garage where it comes down and hits the other structure is where you're going to get leaking and that's there's almost nothing you can do i mean you can do something for a year or two or five years but it that is where it will leak so I, in terms of the look it's okay i'm fine with it it's just going to deteriorate over time that's up to um, you and your contractor mr hart i think uh there were adjustments made to address that issue from the Previous meeting, do you do you not see that adequately addressed? I guess. Oh, maybe I'm not looking at. Oh, no, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing I'm looking at drawing A two point two, and I'm looking at the slope roof comes down. I can't read. It's too. It's this uh, is looks like a two and twelve. I don't think it's two and twelve, but it says that's what it looks like. Maybe it's an eight and twelve. Well, I don't. Know. I can't see the roof, but it, then it says. Uh, 10.5 and 12 of that slow cricket coming down and that's just, I mean, it just, it's, it's a messy situation, but I've said my bit. Um, I'm okay with the look of it. If they're okay with it, then I'm, I'd say go with it. Okay. Take your chances. See what happens. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Board. Uh, commissioners, any other comments? I okay. do have a question. Yes. Uh, I remember that we asked the garage to be kind of set back a little more <laughs> because, you know, it's completely different. You're breaking up. But I can't I hear you. Know, I think the location of the garage is not good. Like we asked to be set back a little more, and I mm -hmm. don't see that in this. That uh, was our original. Uh, uh, comment, I think from two, maybe two, two times ago, we suggested it, it get moved further back to align with the back of the mud room. I think what we're hearing now is that, uh, because of the grading and because of the water issues that they, to push it any further back would exacerbate, uh, the issue, uh, uh, that already exists. And, uh, I think that. If, but you can change the direction of the garage instead of, you know, sticking yeah. out. It can be like a diagonal or a horizontal, like just farther back. I remember from our site visit back in whenever it was, first time, behind where they're putting the garage, that hillside is pretty packed, pretty steep. 
and it's it, it's got an elevation is uh, three foot, you know, up the wall where, where you envision the drywall would be. So there's got a lot of a lot of material to even push that garage back to where they want to put it right now. Look at look at the section through that uh, that little link there, and that shows you on a two point two. The drawing A2.2, the bottom drawing number, drawing number two, shows a section through that mud room. My God, that is, look at the water coming down that slope, heading right into that building. It's, that cannot be good. That is not a crappy situation. It's, a, you, homeowners, be aware. You've been told uh, you've got a situation there that looks scary. And I think you're going to get water there sometime. Uh, you're going to get water the other place. You've got two points in that mud room. That it is that mud room. Maybe it's good. It's a mud room because it may fill up with mud. But at any rate, <laughs> I think it's. Uh, it. I have problems. I have. I would never build it, but uh, you know somebody else could build it. It looks okay. I mean, I think it's fine, and I have no problem with the look with how it relates to the existing building. I think it can absolutely cannot move a bit into that slope. It's already too much into the slope, I think. All right. That sounded uh, kind of like kind of like a motion, Ed. I, uh, well, I would say it's, uh, you know, we've, okay, I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we, uh, uh, what was, what are we looking for here? Uh, but before you do that, Ed, <laughs> could I have asked, you know, another question? So I know, you sure. know, you know, one of the things that I had asked about on the previous meeting was about the, 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 um, previous garage that had fallen down or, you know, that had, you know, I guess there was a bit of demolition by neglect with, with that previous garage. That was um, a storm that came through. It was a storm. Oh, okay. That that's that was you know, my question is to to what extent in terms of the demolition of that, you know, previous garage um was due to you know, water issues or you know, what was it's, the it set up closer to the road. I think you can see in that area. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that. So I mean, was there any thought of of you know you know, this, you know, the garage addition being similarly placed. Uh, well, so the reason why it wouldn't be placed, it's, it's in the same location, like East, like just moved over closer to the house in order to connect it to the house to make it an attached garage. Um, and the reason why the old garage collapsed was that huge snowstorm that we had in like 2010, the double blizzard. Yeah, Not 35 inches. Oh, I think it was a big snowstorm and right. it, it, it collapsed the roof. Yep. Okay. So we uh, we've sort of headed down the path of the attached garage uh, solution that we've agreed with that up to this point. So I think we, uh, Ms. Evans. Uh, okay. We yeah. That, thank you. That just that. clarified the, you know, the, the issue in terms of the previous um, garage. Okay. Very good. I'll make, I'll make a motion to is that we issue, vote to issue a certificate of appropriateness for this plan. Very I good. Got a second on that from me, Mr. Mr. Myers. Okay. Great. Is there uh, here? Uh, so let's vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So Oops. there's one, one opposition? Two oppositions. Okay. And the names, uh, Chris Weston and uh, who was the second? Was that Marina no Novais? Yes, it was Marina Novais. Okay, very good. Um, can, some can, other I, patches? can we? Can we quickly do a voice vote on that one? Caitlin, can you just call the roll? Um, and we'll just do a voice vote real quick. Caitlin. Yeah. Um, all right, going down the list. Uh, Chris. Chris Weston opposed. Ed. Yes, four. John Holman. Yes, for the motion. Marina.
Marina, I'll mute you. I am mute myself. No. Okay. Um, Mitch. Yes, for the motion. Phoebe. For the motion. Rob. Yes. Steve. Yes, for the motion. And Wendy. Yes. Perfect. So the motion does pass. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. And congratulations, Ms. Bird. And uh, go to it with uh, uh, taking the comments we made to heart, please. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Other business, uh, Ms. Bensley? Yes. So that was everything you all had to discuss and vote on tonight. So thank you for getting to that. Um, Reminder, there is no meeting in December. We hope you all have a safe, happy, and healthy November holiday season and New Year's, and we will see you back for our next official meeting on January 14th, 2021. Um, okay. As a reminder of our inclement weather policy, no meetings are currently held when Baltimore County Public Schools close early um, or are closed for the day subject to due to inclement weather. We are in the process of figuring out if that is still true with virtual meetings, and we will keep you posted as soon as we know more. Very good. Thank you. Um, at, the last, uh, at the last meeting, I put out a, a call for uh, interest in the vice chair opening that's occurring in January. Uh, we were fortunate to have Ed, Hurd, Ed Horde respond and say he was interested. Uh, if there are others who are interested, please make your wishes known and we'll we'll have a vote, a formal vote at the January meeting. Thank you. Best wishes for everybody for the holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Any other uh, news of the day, commissioners? Nope. Stay don't well. Get, don't uh, get is there... started on that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion to end the meeting? I move we adjourn. You're very good. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sounds unanimous. Uh, thanks again, and um, we'll see you in, in January. Thank Stay you. Well. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Stay well, everybody.